So you think your capacitor may be bad. In this video, we'll cover troubleshooting and replacing the capacitor in your AC unit. So let's take care of our disclosure statement first. Electricity is your friend, but it can kill you. If you don't have some general knowledge of electricity, get someone who does or get some advice from a trusted and knowledgeable friend and proceed with caution. Don't just go poking around in the unit, especially with the power on. And even with the power off, some items, such as capacitors, store energy and need to be discharged before touching them. At the very minimum, watch this video all the way through and review the multimedia video before going poking around. Read and follow the multimeter safety precautions listed in the description of the YouTube page for the multimeter we'll be using today. Enough said. Okay, let's get started. Let's assume that you are viewing this to learn a little bit about capacitors. Hopefully your AC unit is not on the fritz and you're not in some type of crisis or emergency situation. If that's the case, it might be time to call in a professional. There are two types of capacitors we'll be dealing with today. Start capacitors and run capacitors. Start capacitors are typically round in nature and generally enclosed in plastic. They are used to get a compressor started and are connected to the compressor start circuit and a potential relay. They drop out of the circuit uh, once the compressor gets started and are not necessary to keep the compressor running. Most compressors today don't even have a start capacitor in them to get them running. However, if your compressor is having a tough time starting, it might be a good idea to have one installed. These are also called hard start kits. Run capacitors are different in that they are designed to continually stay in the electrical circuit and continually supply a burst of electrical energy to the compressor or fan motor to keep it running. There are two types of run capacitors that we'll be dealing with. A single capacitor and a dual capacitor. They can be identified by the number of terminals on the top of the capacitor itself. A single, a single capacitor will have two sets of terminals on top and it's designed to operate one component, either a fan motor or a compressor. A dual capacitor will have three sets of terminals on the top and it's designed to operate both the fan motor and the compressor with one unit. A dual capacitor is nothing more than two single capacitors built together into one shell. So let's see what we're talking about. We're going to use our multimeter to check our capacitor and see how it is faring. First, we're going to disconnect the power of the electrical unit. So first, we're going to discharge our capacitor here. We're going to take a uh, pair of pliers here, and we're going to go across the two terminals from common to our fan terminal, discharge it. We're going to go from common to our compressor terminal and capacitor and discharge that. Uh, sometimes you may get a little snap, uh, electrical discharge. Other times you may get nothing. In this case, we didn't get anything. Uh, now we're going to take the wires and remove the wires. Make sure that you have taken a picture of how, how the capacitor is wired and what wire goes where, or at least jot down a little wiring diagram to let you know what uh, wire goes where. So we're going to pull our wires off here. And now we're going to check the capacitance of this capacitor. Remember, we've got two circuits here, the compressor circuit and the fan motor circuit on this capacitor. So we're going to take our meter. We're going to set it to capacitance setting here. We're going to take our leads, go from the common terminal to the fan terminal. And you see here that our capacitance on the fan circuit is 3.03. We know this capacitor was rated at a 3 microfarad for the fan side, so we're right in line right there, 3.03. .03. Now we're going to take the same thing, go from the common terminal to the compressor terminal. We're going to check it. And here we're showing that the capacitor rating is 45.9. Uh, rating on this capacitor. You remember it was rated at 50. Um, so we're right at 10% uh, in that area right there. Um, the capacitor is probably good, but if you have any doubts at all, it's right on the 10% uh, side. Uh, I would certainly have a capacitor as a standby 
uh, to replace this, but uh, it's it's right in that questionable area. So we're going to put our whoops. So now we're going to remove the capacitor from the unit and just take a look at it. Remember, we have already discharged our terminals here, uh, or discharged our capacitor, so we don't need to be worried about getting shocked by the terminals here. We can actually touch the terminals and it's not going to shock us. We'll take and pull the capacitor out, and you'll see here that the rating on the side of the capacitor is a 50 plus 3 UF 370V. Uh, so what that means is this is a 50 uh, microfarad capacitor for the compressor uh, uh, unit and a 3 microfarad for the motor and it's rated at 370 volts. So we've got a replacement capacitor here and you see that our terminals are marked. We have our common terminal here on top marked with a C. We have our fan terminal here uh, marked fan. And then we have our hermetic or compressor terminals here uh, marked with H-E-R-M. So we're going to replace this thing back in the unit here. Put our screws back in to hold it securely in place. And as we put the terminals back on, I know uh, the orange wires where our common uh, leads here. Whoops, see there, I put them on wrong. Our orange wire were our common terminals. Make sure we put them on the right terminals. Our compressor is uh, the purple wire here. And our fan motor is the brown wire. So there, we've got it all wired back in. We're ready to start the unit back up. All right, so we've got the power back on the unit. All we need to do now is go inside and start the thermostat, and the unit should start up and run perfectly. And there we go, our unit is running. I hope this video has helped you a little in troubleshooting your AC unit. If it has, please leave a comment below or share it on Facebook and Twitter. To receive other DIY videos, just subscribe to our channel below.